Hi, so in the uh, previous video, I began by doing a deep dive into botnets and, and really wanted to look at what they were and what types of applications you could use a uh, botnet for. And I'd like to continue uh, in this video talking about some more applications of botnets. So recall, basically, a botnet is just basically a series of, of compromised systems uh, that are under the control of a botmaster. And uh, they might have been compromised via things like uh, social engineering, like maybe somebody got tricked into, into uh, uh, compromising themselves. Or uh, it could have been a technical exploit, um, and those are kind of the two main ways that you can have a system become compromised. And it, the, the upshot is that at the end of the day, these systems basically have some type of malware on them. So they're basically infected with malware, and that malware, uh, in turn, uh, looks to a bot master for information on what to do next. And, and typically, the way that's done is is uh, the bot will communicate with the botmaster via a command and control server, which will then in turn provide commands uh, back to the bot uh, in terms of what to do. And that communication happens over protocols like IRC and HTTP and others. So uh, IRC, HTTP, and peer-to-peer -peer and a bunch of other protocols. Now, the, the first killer app I mentioned in the, in the last video was spam, and, and that uh, I kind of talked a bit about in some detail. Uh, what are some other killer applications of botnets? And so the other big application of of a botnet from the perspective of the bot herder are distributed denial of service attacks. So distributed denial of service. And this is typically also referred to as a DDoS attack. So distributed denial of service. And the idea behind a DDoS attack is that the bot herder um, commands all of his nodes to simultaneously bombard a system. So what will happen is the nodes will maybe ask the bot herder what they should be doing next, and he'll give back a kind of command and, and tell, he tells them all when they communicate with him, you know, please go ahead and, uh, you know, at, at a particular time, maybe they'll coordinate it, they'll make a request over the internet, and they'll try to attack uh, a legitimate server. So let's say there's a server out here, it's a legitimate server, and it belongs to a well-known website. Um, the bot herder will instruct all of his bots to go ahead and at a particular time, make requests, repeated requests of some sort to this one system, okay, on the internet. This could be, a, again, it's a legitimate site of some sort, or in, in many cases, actually, they're not, uh, although some sites that are attacked by denial of service are legitimate, uh, more often than not, they, from the bot, the bot herder's perspective, they are kind of sites that might uh, toe the line in terms of what they do. They might be like porn sites or... Uh, online gambling sites and so on. I'll explain why they actually do that. Uh, and so the idea is that if all of these nodes that are compromised uh, intelligently uh, bombard uh, this one system, okay, uh, then, um, and, and they do it kind of simultaneously, they do it at the same time, they're coordinated, then this system will have a really hard time responding to all these requests. And, and, and at that, this system might have a hard time uh, responding to a legitimate request. Like, let's say, for example, this is an online gambling site and there, there's a legitimate user out here for this site. Um, when he tries to go to this site, if he happens to try to go at the same time that all these guys are requesting service from this, this same site, this site might start to kind of crash under the load of all these other people making requests and he's not going to be able to make a response back. And so whatever uh, communication was made by this legitimate node to the site, the site's not going to be able to give a response back to a legitimate uh, customer, if you will. Now, the reason for distributed denial of service attacks, the reasons that attackers try to, to do, mount these attacks are, are, are many fold. I mean, certainly, uh, one reason you could try to mount a denial of service attack uh, could be some form of just notoriety. Uh, you know, you could just want to be a nuisance. Uh, and that often happens, especially with popular sites. Some, some people just want to take them down for whatever reason. They don't like them. Uh, it turns out also you can you can do denial of service for extortion of money and blackmail. Let me explain how that model works. Um, so in that model, what will happen is the attacker will, uh, the bot master will basically tell this website, he'll threaten the website and say, you know what, uh, I'm going to go ahead and he'll, he'll threaten the website and, and tell the website that he's going to go ahead and he's going to mount an attack on this website. And the only way to prevent that attack is if the website owner will pay money to the bot master. Now, let's say you are an online gambling site. Let's say you deal with sports betting, and it's the day before the Super Bowl, and you know that's your, your biggest day of business because everybody bets money on the Super Bowl. 
Um, if this bot master comes to you and says, unless you pay me $50,000, I'm going to bombard your site with traffic on the biggest gambling day of the year, um, then you may be inclined to pay him money, to pay him a fee, uh, really getting blackmailed. Uh, and in exchange for that fee, he'll not black, he'll not try to take your site down on a, such an important day for you. Um, now, obviously, uh, you know, for, for this type of thing to work, I mean, it, there's a big risk on the bot herder's perspective because he's revealing all of his different nodes that are involved in the attack, and that's certainly a risk for him. Uh, and also, the reason this tends to happen with a lot of more unsavory sites is that um, these sites, if you're, let's say, dealing with, with a business that might not be on the up and up, you'll have a hard time going to the authorities and, you know, dealing with an extortion attempt uh, because they may not be willing to help out a site that, that does things that are somewhat questionable. So that, that's another really big application of botnets. A third application of botnets, which I want to mention in this video as well, is in installing unwanted applications. So people often do kind of paper install uh, of, of all sorts of applications. And, and I'll give you some examples of these as well. This actually turns out to be a very big business uh, for uh, bot masters, for them, they'll rent out their their botnet to somebody who wants to install these applications across many many systems. And so, uh, for example, you might have a cyber criminal who wants to install adware on bot infected systems without the user's permission, and, and the adware in turn uh, might supplant or replace any banner ads or, or web pages with another ad. And in so doing, he might siphon off any uh, potential ad revenue. So, for example, let's say you are uh, you know your your website here, um, and you might you might have made money off of ad revenue. So maybe you have some ads, and you hope that uh, legitimate users will click on those ads uh, so that you can make money. Okay, and in turn, what the what the bot master will do, um, or, or the the um, the cyber criminal who may be using the botnet, he'll uh, put some adware on your system, and that adware in turn will prevent that click from going to the to the actual advertisement. Maybe what will actually happen is instead of seeing this advertisement on a system, the user is going to see, uh, the adware is going to basically replace this advertisement with another advertisement that, that's a different one. And this is actually happening on the local system. So the user never sees this ad. They'll, they'll see the, the replaced ad or the, 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 the compromised ad. And they'll end up clicking on that by accident or, or maybe on purpose. And instead of getting revenue to the legitimate advertiser or to the... Uh, legitimate affiliate who's hosting the advertisement, the revenue is, is uh, now going to be going to somebody else and, and somebody else's products are going to become advertised. Um, another application, instead of adware, is you can install uh, fake antivirus software or fake anti-malware software onto a system. And this type of software might erroneously tell the user they were infected with malware and that they need to pay some amount of money to have that malware removed. Now, of course, uh, in real life, I mean, it, the only malware in question here is the malware that compromised that system in the first place. But a user may not know that. A user might actually think they've been compromised, uh, which they have. And they might think that uh, by paying money, they'll, they'll get that compromise off their system. So any type of unwanted application uh, is big business. And sometimes we also call this uh, paper install. And so you often have uh, bot masters who will rent out their botnets to people who are interested in paying money to have some type of other nefarious software installed on systems where they can then profit from that software being there. All right, I hope you found this useful. I'm going to uh, stop right here. In the next video, I'll talk more about botnet applications and talk about some of the less common applications, but that are applications that are still important to talk about. Thanks a lot, and I hope you join me there.